body of laparoscopic surgeons of India with more than 8,000 members. Since last year, when we all had to go from on-site programs to virtual program, IAGS has started this program. IAGS prime time is becoming more and more popular and is being watched right now outside India also here in UK. And we all USA had to and go from on-site programs to virtual programs. IAGS has started this program. To eminent faculty, IAGS prime time India is becoming and more and more popular and and discuss is being watched common and right now topics outside India also Today here we have you and we all had to and go from on-site programs to virtual programs. IAGS has started this program to eminent faculty. IAGS prime time India is becoming and more and more popular and. and and discuss is being watched common and right common now topics outside and India also here have you and we all had to and go from on-site programs to virtual programs. But IAGS has started this program to eminent faculty IAGS and then surgeon second. So there is a very interesting talk by Parin Bhatia on life beyond surgery. I will invite our convener for IAGS prime time, Dr. Kanagwell from Chennai, to start this program tonight dr kanagar thank you mr president uh, it's a privilege for me to convene this important activity of the IGS. Uh, thank you uh, dear faculty who have been uh, kind enough to share their wisdom for this evening let me quickly tell the program outlay today uh, we have the most eminent speakers uh, professor pravin bhatia and professor arvind kumar we have none other than more eminent uh, moderators also this time we have uh, Dr. Samir and Dr. Jayashree ma'am for us to do the honors of moderation. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will have uh, Dr. Parin Bhatia go first on uh, sharing his wisdom on uh, life beyond surgery. And uh, then we have Dr. Arvind Kumar uh, talk, uh, talking about thoracoscopy and robotic thoracoscopy and its current status. This is the plan for the evening. Now, I invite uh, Dr. Samir Pasha, sir. Samir Basha, sir, is a very eminent personality. He is uh, uh, the chairman and the CEO of the Shanavas Hospital, which is one of the very busy hospitals, uh, bringing in uh, minimally invasive surgery from the early 90s to a rich metropolitan city. Samir, sir, has been instrumental in most of the academic activities. And for your information, he is the number one member. I would say the membership number of IAGs is number one. And he continues to be number one in everything what he is doing. He, is the, he was the past president and he is currently the trustee of the uh, senior trustee of the IAGS. He is the uh, governor general of the Rotary District 3000. And in fact, he has uh, been kind enough in more than handling half a million rupee for uh, various COVID related activities. And uh, he is also part of various uh, social welfare activities, the Pulse Polio Program Initiative, the Breast Cancer Initiative, and many other initiatives of the Rotary are very well handled by the Rotary. And in fact, right now they are working on supplying the oxygen plants and the COVID supplies for the welfare of the most difficult areas. Zamir sir itself want a full half an hour time for me to introduce the uh, activities of him. But then let us have Dr. Zamir, let, let, let's listen to Dr. Zamir and his uh, wisdom on introducing Dr. Bhatia. Over to you Dr. Zamir. Sir, sir I would request you to unmute yourself. Sir. Thank you Kanagal for this uh, nice words of introduction. I do deem it my pleasure and privilege to be amidst uh, this elite crowd this evening. And uh, Mr. President, the convener of this IAGS prime time, uh, Dr. Kanagal, and the speaker, none other than Dr. Parveen Bhatia, all the way from Delhi. And uh, we have another moderator, my fellow moderator, Dr. Jayashree Todka from Pune. And Dr. Arvin will be joining us uh, shortly. We do have this topic on what is life without surgery for us surgeons of course and uh, is that life beyond surgery well 
for me i do not know everything is connected interconnected intertwined but still we do have all these other passion that we have in our lives like i used to love the writings of dr parvin bhatia every time he writes his monthly musings and his writings to take me philosophically on to how to look at life fair and square and uh, how to deal with the patients who come to us and ask questions we think they are irritating us no those questions spring out of ignorance and once we answer them then we are free they are free and we all go scot free and uh, the most important thing for any surgeon is to have a peaceful sleep when he gets back to his home that is the most important thing the moment i toss in bed my wife asked me what has happened to the patient she doesn't ask me what has happened to me she asked what has happened to the patient you might have done hundreds of thousands of laparoscopic surgery thoracoscopic surgery robotic surgery but one small glitch here there you still toss in the bed for all this you need a balance and the surgical program itself is a gurukul where you learn with your teachers you consider them as your gurus because guru is the seventh ladder on from adhyapak to the guru where the guru himself dwells leads the way inspires you motivates you and he takes you along taking your hand and he go you go along with him he is an inseparable part of your life besides that we do have lot of other passions because every surgeon is an artist you know why because we always consider surgery into three parts we would always have this eternal everlasting never ending discussion going on in every meeting asking whether is surgery an art yes it's an art i would love to see sunil operate on hernias i would love to see parvin bhatia goes on his laparoscopy i would love to see kanegavel go about his academic work every day morning he brings in all those lovely articles i don't know where from he brings all this but he has a passion to do that and this is something that we do all have and after which in our meetings i would love to see our president sunil take on the mic and give out belt out melodious kishore das songs and you know that brings out the evening in and the artist in him so every art is different the results of every surgery differs from surgeon to surgeon because that depends on his artistry how he goes about how he respects the tissues how he approximates them how he takes out the dead tissues and how he brings about the puts back the life in those tissues besides that we also know whether this is also a profession yes it is a profession because we need to have a living we need to have a well being of our family we need to take care of our family so this is also a profession but whatever said and done this is a calling this is a divine work that we are doing so all these are together this is an art this is a part of our living and this is also a divine well being so divine calling so we intermingle all of them and parveen i have seen him besides his writings his gardening skills and the way it blooms on the top of that uh, smog that we have in delhi you know that is something that we have together in delhi a combination of smoke and fog so these together form the smog in delhi the pollution is so much so that in spite of that he has taken his garden on to the top rooftop and above the smog and he has his garden there so this is parveen's work and of course sunil's work and our own founder president the mentor our own godfather professor tahanta nodia budwadia his passion is golf and golf is something he dwells on and when whenever he invites me to his facility in mumbai to be a faculty he would write a formal letter and in the postscript a uh, letter will be he will be handwriting himself i promise you a round of golf with me after the work is over so this gives me four hours of total friendship kinship relationship with the professor odwadia where we walk along we talk so much 
we have so much of interaction to do not only that professor krishna rao the father of endoscopy in india the work that he does around the house his house is a temple he calls it his wife his children his garden where he waters his every flower every plant himself that is something to look at and of course the our another pride the president of india the honorary surgeon to himself is dr pradeep chaube his house is something that is more than a salargen museum his house is something where you see a new york museum there every wall every room every part nook and corner of his house is so very well crafted very well adorned with paintings of madam and the music instruments of his children and even the washrooms have been so cleanly decorated i'm not saying anything cleanly decorated with lot of paintings and this is something it took me 3 hours to just go around his house and look at every painting in a hurry if i had spent in leisure it would have taken days together to go around his house that is how it is there so the life beyond surgery how you have all this in your mind and your body to take care of your work because your work i know is always so much of pressure so much of tension and during this pandemic crisis how it takes you to go through all this is something that is very 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 pressing on you so you need to have these steam let offs steam let offs to have a life beyond surgery and that is what we are now looking forward to hearing from dr parveen bhatia the man himself the man himself from the capital city of india whom i have seen always laughing i have never seen him cross i have never seen him say any word of small anger to his assistants he even he has undertaken lots of huge programs teaching programs and he will be there every time operating then interacting and then singing along with us and laughing along with us and joking along with us and in spite of that i also follow him in his social media in social media i see him how he lets off with his family and his all those lovely bhangras lovely kurtas lovely dress that he wears i really am fascinated sir i am you are president of the your fans association parveen bhatia pb fans association i am your fan so i now uh, request of on your behalf to request to invite parveen bhatia to speak about life beyond surgery over to you sir thank you thank you very much dr zameer dr kanwal and president iags for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts honestly speaking when dr sunil popat phoned me and he requested he requested me that i should not talk about surgery i should not talk, talk about laparoscopic surgery i should not talk about bariatric surgery and robotic surgery and you have to talk how or what lessons have you learned in your life beyond the surgery so i bring greetings from my zen garden and not from sir gangaram hospital not from bhate global hospital today the topic which has been very very dear to me for so many years i am going to take 30 minutes to take a round that what as dr samir pasha had beautifully summed up that surgeon has to be an artist surgeon has to be thinking a cerebral work laborer rather than a manual laborer and iags has been my first love and all of us have the blessings of dr kudwadia as dr samir pasha was also mentioning and i definitely would love to touch on the aspects which are very very important today in in this uh, life and most important aspect which i am facing or many of us the surgeons are facing is this one and a half years of covid era we have seen so much of challenge it is a pandemic 
and it has been a challenge for one and all i would not jashri i would not call this as a problem i would call this as a challenge so we have to make sure that we meet this challenge and as surgeons we are more entrepreneurs rather than only the surgeons the first as you mentioned we always pay respect to our gurus and i pay respect to my very close friend doc late dr rakesh sena he was the one who motivated me to go in for motivational talks he would always invite me for his beams talk in mumbai and that was the initiation of my motivation talks and now i do lot of motivation talks but with so much of sadness i would say life is too fragile all of us know that in delhi in india in universe in globe what is praveen bhatia nothing a small minuscule atom so that is our thought that why should we have any ego why should we have any pride and in this last one and a half years all of us have seen that so much of chaos is there and especially in last seven days i must have learned more beyond the surgery so my i was i, I and my wife dr indu bhatia both of us are running the setup of bhatia global hospital but can you imagine throughout day and throughout night we are managing oxygen once there are five vans which are going from one place to another to get the oxygen so uh, ambulances are used for oxygen cylinders and not for the patients so it is all about finding the calm in the chaos and i think this is very very important especially in our theaters also all of us know that if we are doing some surgery and if we are keeping ourselves calm calmness is super power if we are keeping ourselves calm then we will not have any challenges during the surgery and i always tell my younger colleagues that in cases of any crisis one has to stay positive and i have been speaking a lot about this topic of staying positive in the covid era so i think one has to remain positive and one has to believe in the calm mind calmness is super power i know it is very very challenging it is not an easy game to practice but it takes time and lao zu had beautifully written the best fighter is never angry that means it, we are the fighters we are fighting this situation but we are never angry if we are maintaining calm then this enemy will also go off i remember my first guru dr j p singh Uh, who's uh, i was the first pg and can you imagine on the board where we were standing on the in his office the board was there this too shall pass away and i i he is no more but i pay full respect to him and i believe that i have learned so much from him apart from surgery that this is ultimately giving me so much of results also this too shall pass away if we have a such a minuscule entity and if we some challenge is there then if we think that yes problem has come challenge has come but this will pass off in the sense all of us know that in 1914 to 1940 22 million deaths then 50 million deaths in spanish flu and so on and so forth so many challenges have been there but they have passed similarly covid era is also going to pass we should definitely trust in god and to be trusted is a greater compliment than being loved uh, to me surgeon is very very close to god if we do any small mistake sir, the god kicks you on the ass and ultimately surgeon is very close to the god and we have to have 100% trust on him and that is the thing which is going to take us out of this challenging situation also when any battle is there then one has to think that every battle is won before it is fought i would just quote a small story that when the mahabharata was going on then krishna and arjun 
went to the battlefield and one day prior that means preparedness one day prior and they found that so many trees were there and early in the morning they took the help of the elephants to fell down all the trees can you imagine on one of the tree there was a sparrow with four small little ones and they fell onto the floor the sparrow told krishna lord you are the savior of my children you have to save my children and the krishna carried on smiling he did not say anything and, and immediately he requested arjuna to give him the bow and arrow and he shot the elephant which had uh, fallen down the tree and but can you imagine this arrow hit the bell not the elephant but the bell and arjuna smiled what is this you are the best archer in the world but i can kill the elephant so give me a chance but krishna carried on smiling with so much of calmness and next day the war started battle started for 18 days after 18 days so when they had won pandavas had won the fight then again when krishna and arjuna were walking on there they were finding so many lives so many limbs lying down but when they reached the metal piece of bell krishna told arjun just lift up this bell and would you be surprised arjun said why but he said please do what i am telling you he lifted the bell and the sparrow with four little ones were underneath that what i mean to say god knows everything one has to have trust in god one has to then only we will come out and i am absolutely sure that we have all of us all the surgeons have already learned in their lives that i can sleep when the wind blows so we we are always preparedness is there and then only we can manage our patients well i remember dr udwadia telling his pg again and again how many times have you done gastro gynecology his pg dr ramesh punjani said sir i am the first year pg i have not done one no how many times have you done your gastro gynecology his thought was you should have done your gastro gynecology in your mind 25 times before you go in for surgery so what i mean to say surgeons have been trained to do the preparedness before we go in for surgery and life isn't about finding yourself life is about creating yourself and all of us know that so many challenges would come in the life of the surgeon but we should have the ability to adapt to change for example in last one and a half years all of us have seen that we have been doing elective surgery but with lot of caution lot of changes and last few days when this second tsunami wave has come then obviously we are not doing the elective surgery so the measure of intelligence is the ability to change and beautiful saying is that if you can't go outside go inside i i think this if i want to give one message tonight and this is the message that we have to go inside introspect ourselves god has given us this time to go inside see within happiness lies within enemies enemy also lies within and once we go inside and inside our home inside our family inside our family relations then only we will be having the happiness and i must pay my respect to another guru dr adas choudhury who has been guiding me in tough times also that enemy lies within happy lies happiness also lies within but he has the one, he is the person who has always been with me on my side whenever some crisis is there and he has taught us that rather fail with honor then succeed by fraud i think this is very very important especially when we start holding some positions so we should be having those moral values that is more important than anything else in life ultimately as sunil popat was mentioning that i said that when i was in class 9th then i used to think that i should become a surgeon that was wrong i at that time i should have dreamt that i should become a good human being i think all of us have to be good human being first 
and then you can become a good doctor or a good surgeon. And Dr. Adas Chaudhary has been always pushing me to read as much as possible. And it is said that a person who won't read has no advantage over who can't read. So I would request you to finish off one book one week and that will ultimately, please do not give the excuse that I am so busy I cannot finish off one book. And as Dr. Samir Pasha was also mentioning that surgery is an attitude. For example, there are surgeons who are quality conscious and there are surgeons who are safety conscious and there is a very thin line. I would say that safety is the avoidance of a negative outcome and quality is the achievement of a positive outcome. So we have to be very, very careful. And my one liner is there is safety in more safety. So whenever my surgeons, my younger surgeons are operating, I always ask them, have you given your 100% in this surgery or not? They say, oh, sir, actually, no, no. I say, no, that means you have not done your best. So you have to be made very, very clear in your heart that you have given your best to the patient and then only the best result is going to come. The best post-operative care is in the operation theater only. So that one has to believe on. And as we were mentioning, in life of a surgeon, so many challenges come. So one has to carry on editing our life because it is your masterpiece you are responsible for your life you you are responsible for what you have and you are responsible for what you don't have so this is important and i remember when i was in school i could just find out this photograph today one my principal mr t r gupta he taught us the value of values how there, in class i was the head boy in class 10th and 11th he started a system called examination without invigilation and we were surprised that how can it be in a school examination without invigilation for three hours the examination papers were given to us answer papers were also given to us and the teacher would vanish off after three hours he would come and then take the papers off and at that time uh, frankly speaking, even if I was the head boy of the school, but I could not understand what is he going to teach us. But later in life, I realized this was the moral value which he inculcated in us. And that is paying till date also, especially my younger colleagues. I would always urge you that the moral responsibility, the sensitivity, the values should lie inside rather than outside. So if you are having health consciousness. For example, I'm thankful to Dr. Ramanna also for sharing this photograph that health is happiness. This happiness lies within you. It is not that it has to come from outside. The remote control of your happiness should be in your hands, not in somebody else's hands. In Corona times, all of us have learned that more important is health, health and health. Sarjai, why I tell my younger colleagues that if you have done your surgery, if you have given your best, and if you think that yes, even God cannot cut one mark out of my surgery, then the results will be the excellent surgery. And again, Dr. Popat requested me that how, and Dr. Zamir Pasha also mentioned that how do you find so much of time to have a work-life balance? I remember that I was doing a workshop in uh, Lucknow, PGI, and somebody asked me at the end that how do you find some time for your family? Have they not divorced you yet? Or they? So I said they don't get time even to fight with me. So what is the challenge? But our thinking is that we have been striking a work-life balance by spending quality time with children. I think most of us spend the quantity time. No, it is not required. More important is quality time, which is to be spent. And I have a lot of reverence to Sadhguruji. And ultimately, it is life is neither suffering nor bliss. It is what you make it. I, I think the lesson which we have learned in life is that if we are positive from within, if we are ready to learn from our mistakes, 
and if we are ready to have the happiness from within only then we always will be in a positive mood otherwise if and robin sharma has also beautifully said that life wants you to win please get out of your own way i think this is very very important please do not think that the enemies are lying outside youth start thinking that the enemy is outside but it it is inside only and again in surgery also i strongly believe that a split second becomes eternal this is the one of the photographs all of us will remember in hudson river hudson river the the plane had come but ultimately can you imagine that the sully sullen burger he had a split of second and he took the time to land onto the hudson river and he saved all the passengers so if he had taken a decision maybe after one or two minutes or he would have crashed into those new york buildings and everyone would have been dead and somebody asked him that what made him land onto the hudson river have has he done it before he says yes i have done it many times in my mind i think this is very very important the preparedness has to be there is one has to think again and again even a small second can lead on to cbd injury or some 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 challenges in the surgery also in life also for example if we are just walking and crash and we can have fracture or whatsoever so split second becomes eternal that is very very important in our life and i have been doing the sky diving also i have done three times the sky diving and i always feel that one should definitely have so much of time that we are feeling young from within and in this for example when i went up at 13000 feet and when i was jumping down my son yeah, asked yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yes first i father doing it father the gift from son nice one son is jumping as well yeah 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 he is all hello son and it is always challenging to know that your son is jumping first and your son is jumping first and then i jump but definitely it is a challenge and i have done it twice and again in the end i would always put it this way that follow your passion if you are passionate about surgery if you are passionate about life if you are passionate about positivity you will always be passionate about other also meticulousness should become a habit and i i again must thank ramanna for sharing this photograph and definitely i feel that let the child within you not die you should one should always live life to the fullest one should follow the passion one should i i am always as dr samir pasha was also mentioning i am always enamored by the nature i want that i should remain as close to the nature and this is these are the covid times which we went and ultimately could take the photographs off also what what's done is done what's gone is gone one of life's lesson is always move on I, i think this is very very important but in the end i would put it this way that never ever give up you can see the frog the the stork is going to eat but frog is holding the neck of the stork in such a manner that ultimately frog will be jumping and stork will be dead so if this goes on in in your thoughts that i am not going to quit i am going to move on from the situations then obviously we will be successful throughout life and the last slide would be the future depends on what we do in the present and all of us know how much respect mahatma gandhi has in all our hearts so i again with folded hands i thank dr sunil popat to request me to speak about life beyond surgery not about hernia not about robotics not about bariatrics but life beyond surgery thank you very much may god bless you all stay safe have double mask keep social distance do the sanitization and give your best i know i just last uh, minute that napoleon bonaparte he was told by his soldier sir we are surrounded by enemy all over and he was such a positive man napoleon bonaparte he said very good very good now you can shoot in any direction 
So if we are able to shoot in any direction, Corona will also go off. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Bhatia. Excellent lecture, as I expected from you. And that's why <clears throat> so we would bring you back on your pet uh, topics of surgery also sometime. But <clears throat> this is what you can enumerate the best. We have been reading your uh, uh, beautiful messages every morning on uh, personal messages on WhatsApp, on Facebook. But several things you brought out which every surgeon should know. When you can't look outside. It's a small sentence, but it covers everything. Second thing you said, which was very nice, was keep the child within you always alive. And I think that is most important. So many hobbies you have shown that that shows that you keep your child within you always alive, and that keeps you going. Third thing, I totally agree with you that all the surgeons believe in God because many a time we come across patients and surgeries and technical difficulties that we know that a, a human being, an excellent surgeon can do the best what he can do, but the result is given by the God. And so many hobbies you have suggested also to our surgical colleagues. I think it is for all the surgeons to look beyond surgery. We have, it is our living, it is our passion, it is our divine calling. But in the end, it is our profession. We are human beings. We should have all kinds of hobbies. We should keep our interests alive. And we should have passion to live. As our founder president, Professor Udwadia, has said and showcase so many times that even at any age you can still suppose you have stopped doing surgery you can still teach you can give positive thinking lectures like what Dr. Bhatia just gave and one thing Dr. Bhatia has told us all of us so many times age is just numbers <laughs> age is nothing but a number yeah. So, thank you very much for coming on this podium and sharing your thoughts on life, making everybody's life more happy and more safe. We have second lecture today by uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar. I will request uh, our convener, Dr. Kanagwell, to come and invite the second moderator, please. Um. I would uh, take five minutes of uh, his time, sir. Uh, can I request uh, Zami, sir, to ask few questions to Dr. Bhatia for uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Arvin is getting connected. Dr. Zami, sir, please. Uh, that was simply wonderful and wonderfully simple. That's another slide you can take for your next motivation talk. <laughs> Great. You gave me three points, uh, Praveen. One is just happiness, joy is an attitude. So how you prepare yourself is the one that is more important. And you have asked us to gain wisdom by reading. And this goes on to tell one of my professors who always used to insist, what the mind does not know, the eyes do not see. That's very, very important. And thirdness, the family life. More importantly, you said you are very, very peaceful in a family life. So that also comes with my motto as to what fight and surrender. Right away surrender. Apologies, sorry. And you are in, in sync with your family. So that's only important. And now that Arvind is here. Arvind, can you hear us? Uh, yes. Here are we now? And uh, so these are things that we have got a lot of questions. But uh, since uh, questions we can take after uh, this work. Can I will? Is uh, Professor Arvind connected? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's getting in, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Pasha, sir. Thank you, Bhatia, yeah, sir, I for uh, sharing your wisdom here. Yeah. Welcome, uh, Professor Arvind, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome, yes. Professor Arvind Kumar, to IGS Prime Time. Thank you for being here. Dr. Arvind Kumar, I know Dr. Jayasri will introduce in detail, but uh, he is a very good uh, 
thoracic thoracoscopic surgeon he is a very good teacher he is a very good administrator and he has been very kind to donate some of his time for all of us tonight to share his uh, surgical experience his wisdom his thoughts i'll uh, invite kanagwell to take this program further thank you mr president uh, in fact uh, dr arvind kumar sir has been always uh, i've been uh, what to say amazed by the way of the time discipline and the work discipline he has been insisting on all of us whenever when he was the national president of the asi in spite of holding the ambit of uh, national president he continued to do his school social work which happens every week uh, in delhi and he says everything should have its time and every work should not be deferred because of want of time thank you arvind sir for joining us now i have the privilege of uh, introducing the moderator for the evening uh, none other than the first uh, bariatric uh, women surgeon of the asia dr jayshri tokar dr jayshri again is the one of the most eminent bariatric surgeon in this part of the country and nearby countries also uh, she has been uh, best outstanding student of uh, pune university done her uh, mbbs and ms from pune university and of course she has worked at uh, multiple places uh, gem hospital irkad she has spent some time learning in the cleveland clinic and uh, he she is also has got her uh, fellowship from the gastro obeso center at the brazil and later uh, she became completed her phgs fals and became the examiner for the fals bariatric and she is also a fellow of uh, the most eminent bariatric surgeon professor scopinaro and right now she is uh, operating from multiple places apollo spectra ruby hall and pune hospital and of course she also operates at mumbai and uh, she has created uh, one of the very eminent uh, foundations on weight loss and weight con uh, obesity control the jt obesity solutions and the jt trust foundation through which she is doing lot of important work on uh, obesity management ladies and gentlemen i now present uh, dr jayshri to you jayshri ma'am you can introduce and uh, introduce professor arvind kumar over to you madam so good evening everybody i hope i am audible enough thank you very much iigs for giving me this opportunity to introduce one of the very eminent and prominent surgeons of india so he is the one who introduced the thoracoscopic surgery at aims that is all india institute of medical sciences <coughs> in mid 90s so that was the time when i was an undergraduate in bj medical college in pune over the decade his forte has made him experience of more than 700 to 750 cases per year including all kinds of basic and advanced laparoscopic procedures the gentleman who joined mbbs at aims <coughs> and came out as the best undergraduate student of the year in 1980 the one who finished off his ms from aims again and the journey of him becoming the faculty in 1998 and the professor of surgery in 2003 beyond at aims and full of professional upliftment pride and satisfaction Ladies and gentlemen, this is Doctor Professor Arvind Kumar, who has introduced thoracoscopic surgery to India, as we said in the mid nineties. From AIMS, the journey started. Now he is the chairman of Institute of Chest Surgery, Chest Onco Surgery, and Lung Transplantation. Co-chairman. at the medanta robotic institute gurgaon he used to be the former chairperson for center of chest surgery and robotic surgery at gangaram hospital delhi professor of surgery and chest at robotic unit in the aims founder and managing trustee for the lung care foundation 
through social media i also know him as a person who works for the climate change so a person passionate about his work not only in terms of the technique and the skills but for advancements as a teacher who spread the knowledge and the skills and his passion towards the society to make everybody's lung stay good and i think in the covid era we have already understood the importance of our lungs much more than before and of course the oxygen as dr bhatia said it is essential that we should be having gratitude today i want to take this opportunity to say thanks to the air for giving us oxygen without casting anything over to now the inspirational gentleman professor dr arvind pun welcome sir to this august crowd of iags the pride president iags professor sunil popat uh, professor kanagvel a uh, chairperson uh, professor jashri totkar professor jameer pasha pushpendu mandal ishwar murthy and my uh, dr darshika shah dr prachi mahajan and my younger brother dr parveen bhatia uh, namaskar and good evening to all of you my humble and sincere thanks to each one of you dr popar dr kanagvel and dr todkar for those hyperbolic words which we have used uh, i am a very very small person humble background and continue to be a small person uh, and it's very kind of you to have given me this opportunity from this very prestigious platform and also use these extremely generous words which i don't know whether i am worthy of but nonetheless very very thankful to all three of you dr popper dr kanagavel and dr jayshree for these extremely kind words you've been very very generous with the words yes it's true that thoracic surgery has been my passion and i'll just switch on the slides so thoracic surgery definitely has been my passion and uh, i have been dedicating almost my complete time to this uh, uh, specialty since early 90s when i actually uh, ventured into this area accidentally and it's a, it's a nice story to share with all of you that i was a general surgeon uh, doing starting you know when that 1992 laparoscopy started and uh, everybody was in that lab poly era i also was in that race but uh, the unit i used to work with professor chattopadhyay and who used to do esophagus for which he used to open the chest there was nobody doing thoracic surgery so the medicine people or the other the, the chest medicine people sometimes needed a biopsy and they used to request professor chatterjee can you just uh, uh, you know open the chest and do the biopsy and uh, i started assisting him and that's where you know some interest developed and then i asked professor chatterjee and therefore i dedicate this lecture to him and because he is the person because of whom i entered this surgery and he says yes sir will that's a good field if you are interested just go ahead and credit to him that he and held me from that early 90s till 2012 when i left institute and till date even today when i am in trouble i i call him and i seek his advice and it is because of a mentor like professor chattopadhyay that i am in thoracic surgery today he encouraged me he guided me he supported me he hand held me whenever i was in trouble when i created complications he consoled me he brought me out of it and he allowed me encouraged me to continue and that's what has allowed the journey to take place so i pay uh, respect to this person and uh, wish for his very very healthy many more years 
presently, I'm at Medanta, as Dr. Jayashree mentioned, and this is the team of six consultants that we have. And with that, we have four uh, uh, DNB. So I wish to share with, because there will be a lot of postgraduates also, or you people will be interacting. I'm happy to share that the DNB program, which was already present in Medanta before I joined, but was dormant because of absence of a consultant for two years, has been reactivated. And right now we have two seats of DNB thoracic surgery there. And so with six consultants and four residents and a whole lot of uh, coordinators, physiotherapists and dedicated staff, I'm very happy and thank God uh, to be sharing with you that it's today the largest a thoracic surgery department, not only in terms of volume, but also in terms of the people who are working in that department. Uh, big surgeons used to make big incisions and then uh, incisions started giving trouble. So when it comes to chest, we all know that the difference between a thoracotomy and thoracoscopy that is in the chest and a difference between laparotomy and laparoscopy that is in the abdomen is much more in the chest than in the abdomen. And one must, one, one wonders why. And that's mainly because of the ribs. In the chest, when we make the incision, to put our hands inside, we have to separate the ribs. And that's what causes the problem in thoracotomy. And if you can do the procedure without separating the ribs, it's wonderful. So the solution was to bring in the uh, thoracoscopy. Actually, in early 90s, we thought that we are the ones who are starting, but when we actually read, we realized that this was started way back in early 1900s and had been practiced extensively till 1948 when tuberculosis actually started being treated. So in the pre-ATT era, this was very common, but coming of ATT actually led to decline of the thoracoscopy and it just continued to be done by few people for diagnostic purposes but it was the addition of camera and the laparoscopy revolution which brought it and of course we all know the usual advantages which exist in laparoscopy but are much much more in terms of uh, the, the, the volume or the amount uh, so pain difference in a thoracotomy, thoracoscopy and laparotomy, laparoscopy is far more in the chest and similarly other problems are also there. So we started with simple adhesiolysis which used to be done in the pre-ATT era also. Then we started doing plural biopsies, biopsies of the lung, lung biopsies, wedge biopsies, resections, decortication started being done starting from stage 1 and 2 empyma, which I'll be sharing a video of, and later on stage 3 also. And then there were pioneers like Dr. Robiaro from Italy and Dr. Ralph Lewis from US, and then many others who actually went to lobectomy, which was initially feared, but then became a standard of care, pneumonectomy, segmentectomy, and then, of course, the uh, from the standard four port incision, people went to biportal, uniportal, then started doing various other procedures. And the latest addition is awake, non-intubated. So patient is awake, patient is not intubated, and he still do thoracic surgery. A lot of work coming from China. So today, what are the standard applications? So in Pura, all these applications are there. Maximum applications even today are in Plura, both for diagnosis of undiagnosed pleural effusion and for treatment of malignant pleural effusion. Lung, of course, from segmentectomy, lobectomy, pneumonectomy, wedge resection, and lung nodule resection. All these procedures are being done. There is a lot of application in mediastinum in terms of thymectomy for myasthenia. Initially, only myasthenia, then with experience with the thymomas also. Various other masses, posterior mediastinal masses, esophagectomy continues to be done by this message. And this was the thing. When people started applying it to the uh, to the lung cancer, there was a lot of uh, uh, initial uh, skepticism whether this is actually meeting the oncological criteria, as happened in all cancers in the abdomen also. So the record in chest was almost the same as an abdomen, except that the chest actually followed the abdomen by a gap of maybe five to ten years. So there was a uh, ESTS database analysis in 2018. ESTS is the European Society of Thoracic Surgery, and they found out that of all lung resections, only 30 percent were being done by bats. Now this is in a place like Europe, which is 
actually each country in Europe has a dedicated thoracic surgery program, thoracic surgery center. So USA and Europe were the two places which about 40 years back separated cardiac and thoracic and realized that thoracic has to be a separate stream, cardiac is separate, which occurred in our country much later, about uh, seven, eight years back. Same experience was there in USA that when the Society of Thoracic Surgeons analyzed their data, they found that only 45% of the lobectomies are being done by bed. So, and then people realized that why was this happening? And they realized that actually an average surgeon, when he tries to do a VATS platform lobectomy, he actually struggles and they try to replicate the results which are given by dedicated groups, but it is not possible. So why it's happening? It's because of the 2D vision. So there is lack of depth perception, rigid instruments, poor ergonomics, and a very long learning curve. Now this was in, in places like US and Europe also, where so much of the thoracic surgery is being done, that even there today, only about 35 to 45% of all lobectomies are done by bats. And then came the robot. But before I go to that, let me just show you the, in the thoracoscopy part, uh, I deliberately wanted to avoid showing a lobectomy video because I don't want that this should be pushed in the general sex surgery. But there has been a huge demand on me to actually uh, popularize this procedure in general surgical community. But I maintain that for anyone to be doing advice, so diagnostic thoracoscopy, uh, uh, lung biopsy, a little bit of empyma work is, is okay. But if it comes to bats lobectomy, I strongly believe that's lobectomy is a highly complex procedure and I'll show you a video of complication of that and therefore it should only be done at the center which has at least two qualified surgeons each one of which whom is qualified to do or rather experienced to do that's lobectomy and has full anesthesia ICU and all kind of uh, supportive facilities so but decortication so pleural effusion diagnostic thoracoscopy for pleural effusion diagnostic thoracoscopy for lung biopsy and decortication for empyma is something which i would encourage an average uh, general surgeon by average i mean somebody who's not a dedicated thoracic person a general uh, laparoscopic surgeon but with some experience of this they should be able to do so let me just uh, uh, now share this uh, video Dr. Popat, as I had lost my file, I'll be just uh, taking maybe 30 seconds each time for this uh, starting. So this is a patient who had empyma. You can see hydronemothorax with a completely collapsed lung and the patient was taken up for a bad uh, procedure. I Sir, would I, I one, need to one thing that. I want to convey very clearly here because I want to encourage uh, laparoscopic surgeons with interest in chest to be doing this procedure and therefore I would share this knowledge that decortication and debridement there are two terms which are used decortication means debridement means removal of pus and flakes removal of thickened visceral pleura that is on the lung removal of thickened parietal pleura on the chest wall removal of thick pleura over diaphragm and removing all the adhesion and this is what gives you re-expansion a lot of people go inside and just remove the pus and flakes from there which is debridement now, uh, Kumar, we are not able to see the video are you playing yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not running it i paused okay. it yeah okay. so i was just wanting to uh, focus on these uh, points so this is a important difference when you go in and only remove the pus and flakes it's okay procedure if the lung is fully expanded then this much is sufficient but if the lung is collapsed and you have a thick pleura no thick peel over the over the lung then you've got to remove that if you only go in and remove the uh, the pus this will not suffice so we go inside now see this this is how this is a collapsed lung and lung has got a thick peel over it so this is how we start that using either the cautery or the scissors, we make a cut in this layer. Now see this, what you are seeing, I'll pause here. 
So this whitish layer that you are seeing. Sir, I am sorry to interrupt, sir. We are unable to see your video, sir. Unable to see the video. Yes, sir. Even the now, videos. Sir, videos. please unshare the PowerPoint now, sir. Okay. But it was coming from the. Okay, I'll do it again. Yes, sir. you show okay. the video. I'll, I'll go again. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Are you able to see it now? Uh, sir, uh, we are seeing your file folder, not the video window, sir. Play it now. I would request you to unshare the screen, sir, and then share the video player screen, sir. Just one thing. Yeah, I unshare everything. Yes, sir. Now share the player screen, sir. Which media player are you using, sir? VLC or Windows? VLC media player. Uh, sir, please share that window, sir. Go to share screen option and share your video screen, sir. Yeah, and so this is my. Are you able to see the three videos here on the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm clicking one of the videos now here. Is it coming? Sir, uh, this will keep us only in the folder page, sir. So please unshare this screen, sir. You can sh when you press the share screen, please share your des uh, desktop itself, sir, so that whatever you see, we'll be able to see, sir. Please stop sharing this. Please yeah. share desktop, sir, actual desktop. Okay. Okay, all right. I got your point. So I'll minimize this. Okay, okay. I I got your point. Yes, sir. Now it should come. I'm no, sorry. Sir, you are sharing your PowerPoint, sir. You should yeah, share yeah. the desktop. Okay, okay. Now, not it, sir. So please unshare the PowerPoint, sir. When it is folding, it won't allow you to do that. Okay. Close your PowerPoint. Yeah, I'm closing the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. Close the PowerPoint. And now you go to the share screen option. Yeah. Share your desktop share screen. Okay. Are you seeing the screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. So I now. Double click. Yeah. Is it coming? Are you able to see the video running in your screen, sir? Yeah, I'm able to okay, see the sir. video on the screen. Sir, one moment, sir. I think we are in the same way. Please try to close this uh, share screen option, sir. Sir, please press the share screen now. What all you get, sir, when you press the share I'm screen? I'm getting my uh, desktop, which... Sir, on the left top, you will see screen. Am I right, sir? Yeah. Press that window, sir. Screen. Left top. When you press the share screen, on your left top, you will see the screen, sir. There will be one uh, small icon called screen. Yeah. Can you press that, sir, now? No, so it shows restore, move, close. Sir, uh, sir you, you are in the share screen mode, sir, no? Mm. What are the windows you are able to see in the window? Just give me, give me a second. Yes. Last chance. If it doesn't work. Did it come now? No, sir. Sir, I would request you to can you link it to the PowerPoint and try playing through that, sir. You paste these videos to the PowerPoint, sir. Will that be Dr. convenient for you? Dr. Kanagwal, can you start uh, video first and then share the screen? Would it work? Uh, uh, sir, tell again, sir, please. 
can he start the video first and then share the screen ah uh, that is also a possibility sir sir uh, you uh, uh, you run the video in one of the screens sir um just give me a second i'm yes, now sir. you have a windows or mac sir uh this is the uh, windows nitin can you chip in uh, nitin yeah let him start the video and then share it will come last chance otherwise i'll no no sir. you should be able to do it. sir i would like to guide uh, to the audience here yeah sir uh, you need to open the video first once the video is open you can stop sharing the screen right now is it there no no so you have to sh stop sharing the screen and okay. you have to open the video first one and second. once the video is there in the background as a pop up option only then it will show in your share screen option okay so i have closed all the windows everything yeah, now is please now. open the video first okay i'll minimize this yeah i'll go to the folder and i open the video yeah yeah just open pause it yeah. yeah and now uh, come back to the zoom screen share minimize your screen it. minimize yeah. this Min minimize this minimize it okay now open the sh uh, share screen option and then can you in the panels there'll be a basic if you see on the top there you will see the option of the video of one of the uh, windows can you see it sir yeah there is basic option but is one of the options showing the video uh, thumbnail where yeah. the video is there yeah, yeah if you could you share that does it come so the sh the screen has not been shared sir it needs to be shared i think uh, So, but I think I'll skip the videos and go to the PowerPoint and complete that presentation. Yeah, I think so. Sorry about this. No problem. Okay, Kanakwal, your audio is coming to this. So it's not. It's not mine, sir. Sorry. Okay. Are you seeing the slide? Are you seeing the slide? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. I had kept uh, robotic aorta bifemoral bypass, thymectomy, decortication, and uh, pulmonary artery injury in uh, uh, lobectomy to be shown. Uh, okay. So. so the problems in in thoracoscopy were mainly related to these and then came the robot for extending the possibilities of a human hand going inside we all are aware i'm skipping this uh, as to why how this functions the master console the the tele operator etc etc the advantages which are there how precisely we can uh, think but one thing i would like to mention that the first point access the inaccessible this is something you really have to use the robot to actually believe how it allows you to reach the inaccessible area and the people who have experienced it the most and the best are the urologists who do the urethrovesical anastomosis right in the depth of the of the pelvis 
where it was very difficult to reach with laparoscope. And I also experienced the same in doing an aorta bifemoral bypass, where we suture a graft to the aorta and then bring it out, where also the, the normal laparoscopic suturing, no matter how proficient you are, is difficult and the robot make it really uh, easy. Of course, this allowed complex operations to be made. So in chest, many sleeve resections, which were difficult to do by laparoscopy, became possible by this. And there is a role of 3D vision, which is there. So when we were moving from thoracoscopy to robotic, there was a problem of vision because thoracoscopy was 2D. So everybody wanted 3D. And there was a problem of the rigid instruments. So everybody wanted flexible instruments with hand-like movement. So robot did provide 3D vision, but 3D vision now has come in, in laparoscopy also. But the additional thing in laparoscopy in, in robot is the instruments which have got a wrist-like function. So when you have a straight instrument and you move it, the whole instrument move. But here, that wrist function which is present at the end, which is shown here at the end of the instrument, actually allows you to do very fine. And of course, there are some other advantages like removal of tremors, surgeon comfort because camera is held, and a very steady camera vision, which were all advantages. And of course, it continued to have all the advantages. This was the a video of the aorta bifemoral bypass where we uh, mobilize the aorta, we dissect the two uh, iliac uh, arteries into the femoral and then go into the grind and display the femoral, put a Y graft inside and clamp the aorta just below the origin of the renal arteries, just above the bifurcation here, cut it vertically. Of course, you have to divide the, lap the these lumbar veins and then do an end arterectomy, get a clean patch and suture the end of the graft to the side of the aorta. And this Y graft, the two Y limbs go through a retropatronal tunnel uh, into the groin where they are anastomosed to the femoral artery. Now, this was something which was impossible or very difficult to think of with laparoscopy, but the suturing by the uh, robot allowed it to happen. So how did the robot help us? I have grown from open surgery to thoracoscopic surgery to robotic surgery and have no hesitation in saying that it decreased our conversion rate compared to that. And this I can say definitely for thymectomy, there are many cases where in bats we used to convert like pericardial invo involvement, lung involvement or other areas. But today with robot, except or major replacement of the innominate vein by a graft where we still open pericardial involvement, lung involvement, phrenic nerve involvement, all these can be managed completely by the, the uh, uh, robotic procedure. Of course, the lack of haptics to my mind is still a huge disadvantage. Although people say, and I also agree, that the better vision uh, replaces for that, but uh, the haptics is still. If there was a possibility of haptics, it would definitely make the things much easier. So what is it that we are doing uh, today? So robotic lobectomies are being done. Dr. Sarfolio in US has the world's largest experience in lobectomies, but I must confess that having done open lobectomy, bats lobectomies and robotic lobectomy, we today as a first choice offer VATS lobectomy, but offer robotic lobectomy also if somebody asks for you. So you might ask me why. So what happened was that we analyzed whether the extra amount that we are spending on the robot, are we getting any additional advantage in terms of dissection, etc. And when we analyze, we realize that, okay, as far as lymph node dissection and ease of handling was concerned, it was a little more easier for the surgeon. But when we looked at the patient outcomes, there was no difference between the thoracoscopy group and the robotic group. And therefore, as a first choice, we offer bad thymectomy, which has huge advantages over open thymectomy, uh, open lobectomy. But if somebody says robotic, okay, fine. But that is not, so this is with robotic lobectomies. Although Dr. Sarfolio 
continues to say that no he feels that this is better although hard data to say that robotic lobectomy is better than bad lobectomy is still not there but when it comes to low thymectomy i find a huge advantage and having started thymectomies in 2008 today i am not inclined to do any bad thymectomy because i strongly believe that it gives you a much better dissection again when it comes to showing a difference by hard outcome data that is not yet there but everybody who has done this procedure vouches that the clearance that you can do is much better and when it comes to pericardial involvement lung involvement etc etc it gives you much better option pneumonectomy mediastinal tumor resection mediastinal lymph node dissection esophagectomy and diaphragm plication are other areas that we do this i wanted to show in the uh, this thing another thing is that apart from doing the cases we've also been regularly reporting it so this is our report about robotic lobectomy and then thymectomy robotic thymectomy this was in neurology india then my, recently in the last one year when there was lockdown we've written about 30 papers or uh, covering almost every experience of our last 8 years at gangaram hospital most of which are already published so this is a paper in european journal of cardiothoracic surgery myasthenia is a poor prognosticator for pericardial outcomes after robotomy another thing we started is to go by uh, instead of test go by the sub xiphoid approach for thymectomy and this also is is published in the jmas and also Uh, as far as the diaphragmatic plication is concerned we find robotic suturing to be a very easy thing for suturing it so we go by the abdominal approach and we do a robotic plication this paper is also uh, accepted so lack of ethics to my mind is even today a major drawback of robotic surgery apart from of course what everybody knows and that is cost 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 so it's a costly technology there are benefits but there are areas where you start wondering whether there is so what i say is that when you have a simple straight forward case something like this clear road okay thoracoscopy is the ideal procedure to do but when you have a difficult case to do where thoracoscopy may have a higher chance of conversion then lapros- uh, robotic is something that allows you to a lot of procedures and complete them endoscopically now lot of things i'm told in the last next few years will get added so augmenting reality firefly technology single incision miniaturization and virtual reality being included into the robotic system then integration of the patient data ultrasound ct mri etc making a virtual patient doing a virtual surgery and then doing it on the patient or there are three or four new robotic systems which are on the horizon which actually should be rolling out in the next year or two so there is one from metronic there is one from senhans there is a korean model which has recently been given approval there is one from microsurge and many other models are coming so maybe in next 5 years so we will have actually a plethora of these options available and we will be able to choose from one of them uh, from them as opposed to the present situation we have no choice of putting so minimal invasive thoracic surgery is actually the new standard of care and is being more and more commonly used for various diseases it has revolutionized the surgical care of lung cancer patients where more and more patients are now having the benefit and there is data enough data to say that in terms of lung cancer survival you are actually equivalent to open surgery and there are sub groups where this is actually giving even better survival because of the less disturbance with the immune system of the patient robotic thoracic surgery is an evolution of bats current evidence does not point towards any major outcome advantage for the patient whether it is robotic lobectomy or thymectomy between the thoracoscopic and robotic approach however future technological advances may change this status like addition of augmented reality or other things nobody knows how this will happen but as of today robotic is there is being used but if you ask me dr arvin show me hard data to say that it is superior that data hard data is not available so friends yesterday is gone tomorrow is yet to come 
we have today. So today is the time for some of the younger generation of surgeons to take up this challenging task, come to thoracic surgery, take up thoracoscopic surgery, and take this mission forward. Dr. Popat, Dr. Tanagbe, Dr. Jayashree, and others, thank you very much. And my humble apologies, I apologize for this confusion. Actually, I had some problem with the hard disk where all these videos were linked and I did this jugglery in the last half an hour where Praveen had kindly interchanged the data but unfortunately the jugglery did not work. My humble sincere apologies for this mess up. Dr. Popert. No Very problem Dr. Arvind Kumar. Thank you so much. Excellent lecture. We all enjoyed it and uh, as you said live in present and uh, think about a very bright future. So, uh, is Dr. Jayashree there? <coughs> Madam? Yes. Dr. Jayashree? Thank you very much, yeah. uh, uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar. It was really a lucid presentation about what is the scope of thoracic surgery. And as you said very rightly, the interest of a general surgeon in the chest needs to be developed specifically. I remember the times when almost two years back we started talking about having the thoracoscopic surgery as one of the uh, one of the programs of IAGS. Yes, initially <clears throat> there was some discussion, but later on it became one of the very uh, appreciated program because as I find it always that typically a big 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 of the body, surgeons are not approaching to the extent they should. <clears throat> so thank you very much. We talked about the scope of thoracic surgery, the scope of minimally invasive thoracic surgery and also the scope of robotic surgery. Of course, in the given uh, situation and circumstances, the surgeon has to decide what kind of approach he can take for thoracic surgery but the minimally invasive minimally should be one of the assets of any general surgical practice this is what i strongly feel not only the malignancies or the diseases but as a person who initiated a big long 10 years of career with trauma surgeries I think it is also one of the big avenues where a thoracoscopy can help us um, instead of you know going for a very big incision and then finding out something small in one of the corners and just making the patient more in pain because of the incision than of the uh, disease itself. So thank you very much and I hope a lot of people <coughs> surgical students and uh, minimally invasive surgeons also will find a good interest in chest. We have received some questions from the uh, audience. The first okay, question is... Can I just take two minutes more? Can you hear? Yeah, can I just take two minutes more? Please. Yeah, so uh, since a lot of uh, 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 residents and um, younger uh, colleagues will be there, I just want to clarify that a lot of people have this notion that thoracic surgery as a career has no future. There are not enough cases. There is not enough scope. So I just want to tell them that just as the cardiac surgery is on the decline because of most of the cases, because number one, because of the heart disease going down because of lifestyle modifications, and whatever disease is there is being gobbled up by the cardiologist. So therefore, the cardiac work is less. Just the opposite is happening in chest. Because of our wrong actions, the way we are ruining our air and environment, so we continue to have tuberculosis, infectious diseases, and all other diseases of the third world, but are now having a huge load of lung cancer. And I'm sorry to say that today, lung cancer has jumped to number one position as far as the cancer is men is concerned. And we are seeing now 50% of our cases being in non-smokers. So in future, 
there is going to be a huge load of test cases and if somebody develops interest in this field of course there is hard work there is a team work it cannot be solo work it's a wonderful career to choose dr jayshree thank you for this time so the first question to you is what is the post surgery recovery time for thoracoscopic surgery so doctor uh, uh, so uh, the recovery time depends on the approach that you have taken and also the procedure that you have done so suppose i have done a thoracoscopic pleural biopsy the patient will be going home the next day and if i have done a vats thymectomy the, or vats i don't do but i robotic thymectomy the patient goes home at 48 hours and if it's a lobectomy the patient goes typically at about fourth day so most of the stay is between 2 to 4 days after any thoracoscopic or robotic set the next question is what are the complications associated with these procedures and has covid affected it has covid affected it oh Oh, so complications associated with the procedures again depend on what procedure. So when you say take pleural biopsy, there is hardly any complication. When you do lung biopsy, there could be air leak from the lung, which depends on what is the status of it. The normal lung, you have taken a nodule, nothing will happen. But if it's a diseased lung and you biopsy, there is a possibility of air leak. When we do lobectomy, the biggest and most feared, and I was very keen to show that video where I was doing a bad lobectomy. and i was doing a dissection on the pa i passed the right angle i opened it i should have stopped there but i thought okay let me make more space i opened it further and put the artery burst and you had a huge splash of blood coming from there we had to immediately convert so this video i want to show in every presentation to tell people that lobectomy is not something which should be done at every center so lobectomy you have air leak you have bleeding and all kinds of complications so uh the complication list in chest is huge but you work hard diligently and i would quote the uh, the often quoted statement of uh, uh, dr udwadia that the time for post operative care is on the table i saw this about 20 years back in a conference in delhi and i have just engraved it in my mind the time for post operative care is on the table so more diligent you are on the table lesser post op complications you would have coming to covid so covid has given a new list of surgical complications so the people who are having this lung involvement some of them it's just pneumonia which reverses with or without fibrosis in some people that pneumonia goes to the stage of lung necrosis so they develop necrosis of the lung they develop a bulla like lesion which ruptures and about 10% of these people who are in the icu are developing pneumothorax requiring chest tube some of them develop persistent air leak and we are operating on them we have operated about 10 cases but they have a very high incidence of post operative fungal infections so covid is giving rise to these lung problems otherwise if you operate any other surgery patient develops covid infection post op it's a very serious situation and that is why in the current status for the last almost 10 days we have stopped all our elective surgery yes very true uh, i think all our uh, planned surgical practices have been very harshly affected because of the covid and the uh, lung affection it has got and as you very rightly said we are seeing do no de novo diabetes coming up in the covid affection affection of patients maybe these were the patients where the beta cells are probably hurt to a great extent by the virus itself or this was something which was an underlying disease of the diabetes which is coming up again addition of the problem because of the steroid use and a lot of mucor mycosis yes yes that's exactly what i was referring to that these patient that we have operated most of them when we do the bullectomy we also do pleurectomy in these cases because they all have some element of empyema and most of the pleural specimens 
are showing mucor which is the most dangerous uh, fungus that you can have in the body yes uh, of course and uh, one of the, some of the patients i have heard that after having a very bad inflammatory kind of lung remaining after the covid people have needed to go for lung transplantation even sure so i think uh, as you said very rightly the more the airborne problems the more the lung is going to get affected and the more is going to be the need of uh, skilled surgeons yeah uh, the next question for you is what is the success rate of robotic thoracic surgery <clears throat> so uh, dr shortkar i would like to say that there is nothing like a robotic thoracic surgery there is a robotic procedure so there could be a robotic lobectomy there could be robotic thymectomy robotic esophagectomy plication of diaphragm posterior mediastinal tumor anterior mediastinal tumor or any other procedure so the commonest procedure that i do is my team does is robotic thymectomy we do about two every week and by grace of god the 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 problem rate is very very low and the reason for that is that most of these patients have myasthenia and we spend a lot of time with our neurologists we send these patients to neurologists and spend a lot of time to control their myasthenia before surgery before we take them up for surgery so the more time you spend in controlling myasthenia before the better is the post operative outcome otherwise they could have bleeding so there has been about 1% incidence where patients have required re exploration we've had couple of cases of uh, abnormal aberrant thoracic ducts passing through that area leading to minor chylothorax in the post op period and there have been some cases of post operative arrhythmias because you handle the pericardium quite a lot but otherwise by and large it's been a very safe procedure yes uh when we are talking about uh, thoracoscopic thymectomy in particular in the myasthenia gravis i would like to mention that one of my papers about bilateral thoracoscopic total thymectomy for myasthenia gravis uh this i presented in texas in 2003 and where i got the award for kind of innovation in sages i think that was one of the very good bits for me also in terms of uh, adding some good value to the patient's recovery of course as you said sir in the myasthenia patients uh, typically we saw that the thorax opening helps so much but the number i mean the quantum of uh, anesthesia relaxants goes down to a large extent which can really uh, extend their ventilation time and that i feel is one of the best things that thoracoscopic surgeons can offer to these patients very true very uh, true the first question is, yeah is connected with one more thing does the approach change while counseling the patients for robotic surgery uh sorry approach change means so when suppose i have a patient for low back to me i will tell them that okay so first i decide whether the patient is fit for keyhole or so no it's a huge mass if it's a 10 cm mass there's no point in my wasting time on thoracoscopy because at the end i'm going to make such a big incision for taking the specimen i go or there is any invasion of pericardium you know those kind of things we always go for open surgery so first we decide whether we are going for open surgery or what if it's a if it's a decision for keyhole which is the case with about 90% of cases then we tell them okay we are going to do it by vats there are some people who say no 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 sir hame to robot se karana hai so we tell them okay we can do it by robot but we do not feel that it offers any additional advantage but if you say but it will cost about lakh and a half extra if you are okay they say no no we want robot fine so that's the approach i have with low back me my first choice is bats somebody asks robot i do robot but opposite is the case for i make me where i'm convinced 101% convinced that robotic is a far superior approach because i've done open i've done bats for almost 10 years and then shifted to robot and i know i do a better job with robot so i tell them and even if there is a problem of money we have some agencies from where we try and arrange the money 
and do robot and not do bats at all yes but i'm uh, not saying that those who are doing bats are doing wrong thing it's all about availability till that time i had robot available to me at aims in 2008 i was doing by bats and as you very rightly said my approach was also a bilateral approach because i was always fearful about damaging the opposite phrenic nerve or doing under dissection if you want to stay away whereas when you do under vision from both the sides you do a much better job so my approach was also bilateral but the robot allows you to have similar approach from both the sides or in some cases when there is excessive fat what i do suppose i am going from the left side in the robotic thymectomy and there is a lot of fat on the right side and the phrenic nerve is not that clear i just ask my bedside assistant to put a 5 mm scope on the right side and he starts visualizing the right phrenic nerve so he becomes my eyes and i operate so he says sir aur aage badhiye abhi phrenic nerve bahut dur hai so i move further i move further sir aur abhi abhi bahut dur hai sir abhi bahut dur hai and then when i reach there he said sir bas iske aage nahi jana don't go beyond this so he guides me and under his vision i do a throw. so it's just a 5 mm incision on the opposite side this also we have reported in the literature yes thank you very much for the tips how to make the things more easy and more safe for the patient and of course for us uh the last comment which i would like to make here is it was great talking to you no doubt about it and you shared all your good experiences and the uh, words of wisdom in terms of a big big cavity of the body which was actually left out from surgical practice for many many years not for all but many surgeons i think uh, it is the time for people like you and the igs and the complete cumulative effort should be made to make thoracoscopy get some good amount of uh privilege in terms of the students or the surgeons who want to venture into it the reason be being very less number of surgeons get exposure very less number of surgeons get exposure to the thoracic cavity during their surgical curriculum surgical anatomy unless and until it is very much nicely fixed in the brain the confidence levels are not very good number 3 to make somebody understand the surgical anatomy i think minimally invasive the scopic the illumination the kind of uh, enlargement that we are able to see are going to be very very important in removing the fear about thorax in everybody's mind so i would wish that iags takes a big step in terms of training of surgeons in thoracoscopic surgery like a number of other um, enthusiastic surgeons i would be loving to be a part of this story and i think people like you should take the uh, lead in this thank you very much dr uh, sunil popat dr kangaven sir dr samir pasha dr pravin bhatia and dr arvind kumar the complete doctors community and the igs for giving me an opportunity to have a wonderful evening today thank you very much thank you jayshree for a nice discussion uh, professor arvind kumar excellent lecture as always by you uh, as jayshree pointed out and you also pointed out can you elaborate little more how can we train more laparoscopic surgeons into thoracic how can we interest more junior surgeons in thoracic surgery and what is the way forward for teaching of thoracoscopic and robotic thoracic surgery so uh, dr kopat this issue uh, has been raised uh, many times uh, with me lot of people come to me and sometimes they make very funny demands there was a gentleman who came sir i want to come for three afternoons can you train me in bats lobectomy three afternoons 
So I said, well, I'll be really obliged if you spare so much time for me to learn such a simple procedure, which even after 25 years in this field, today also when I post the case, my blood pressure that morning is up by about 10 millimeters mercury. You want to learn it in three afternoons. So, Dr. Popper, that's the first thing that, you know, thoracoscopic surgery cannot be separated from thoracic surgery. So you cannot have an isolated thoracoscopic surgeon without being a thoracic surgeon and without having a setup which is geared towards handling thoracic surgery. How, how do I set up? So when, when we need, what do you need? You need cases. So you need somebody to feed you cases. So you need first a good chest setup, whether it's a good chest physician or you have a pulmonologist, but you need a good setup who would have the right indications, who would do the right workup for you, who would choose the right cases for you and would give the cases to you, whether it's a simple thing like doing a diagnostic pleural effusion or it's a complicated thing like doing a bad slobectomy. The, 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 the rolling of the ball starts from pulmonology. When the patient comes to you and you need a full backup, to be able to work up that case. Of course, it needs not necessarily be in your center. You can have all the other facilities. But next comes anesthesia. So this is one part which is always missed out. People say, okay, I'm getting my surgical team trained. So I'm part of this uh, group called Asia Thoracoscopic Education Program, which was started by a senior thoracic surgeon from Korea. It covers all the Asian countries. And before COVID, we used to have every three months a pro program to bring young surgeons from different, different countries and train them. And I asked them to do a study. This was done by uh, covid -19. I asked them to do a study that please find out in the last two years, all the surgeons that you have brought spent so much money and trained, how many of them uh, can are, have been able to start the program? And you know, the number was less than 5%. And why it happened, they got trained, they were very excited, but they went back, they did not have the support of their administrators, so there was money issue, they did not have support from anesthesia, so they said, oh, oh, oh abhi to hamari training, and the program fizzled out. So you need a good anesthesia backup, sometimes there will be problems, you, you need blood bank, you need uh, uh, ICU care. Once you have this entire setup available, everybody willing to work as a team, then you are ready to roll off as a thoracic team. There you would start with open cases, small, small cases and having had a training. So you need training of anatomy, but it's not just anatomy. You also need training of physiology. When you handle lung, when we do thoracoscopic surgery, Dr. Popat, one lung is down. The side on which you are operating, that lung is down. Patient is on one lung. Now this changes the whole respiratory dynamics and unless you understand the respiratory dynamics well and your anesthetist understands it well and can manage it patient can have problems and that's precisely the why many centers started but could not sustain i could sustain at aims because i was best with the excellent anesthesia and the chest and the icu and the blood band backup and of course the residents who were there and the same thing happened in gangaram and fortunately, the same thing now is there at Vedanta. The first thing I would say, Dr. Popat, is that whoever comes into it needs to have a full team to start this program. And he would not be calling himself a thoracoscopic surgeon. He has to be a thoracic surgeon first, who, of course, will do mostly thoracoscopy as I do. I don't call myself thoracic or robotic thoracic, thoracoscopic surgeon. I'm a thoracic surgeon whose niche area is keyhole surgery. So this is how I would go. So people will have to show interest. They will have to be keen and willing to dedicate time and take it up as a you know important part of their activity, supported by administration, supported by anesthesia, supported by their chest team. Then this will kick off. But isolated person saying, oh, I, I want to do thoracoscopic. No, no, I'm not going to do open. I only want to do thoracoscopic surgery. Dr. Popper, that can know. Absolutely. Thank you, Arvind. Thank you so much for your clear views. And uh, with this, before we conclude this session, I would like to invite 
all of you and all the listeners for IAGS 2021, which is from 7 to 9th May. It is virtual. And we have with us Organizing Secretary and who is also our Honorary Secretary, Dr. Iswamurthy, to give brief details about the conference. And before that, I'll request Anakwell to take the program further. Yeah. Thank you, President, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, it was lovely to hear the spiritual part of the surgeon's life and uh, what next for the surgeon's armamentarium. Uh, in fact, uh, it was a real blessing. Arvind, sir, put it across. Right? Uh, life is not easy. But then if you are willing to go the extra mile, then the future is yours. Thank you, Arvind, sir, for uh, giving a very curt and very firm message for the youngsters who are willing to work and who are willing to go the extra mile. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and enlightening us the wisdom of thoracoscopic surgery here. Yes, sir, please. My, my uh, sincere thanks to each one of you. Trust me, it's been a real pleasure for me to be interacting with all of you. Uh, particularly, uh, Jayashree made the interaction so lively, so interactive and so in-depth that, uh, you know, normally... It's rare that I have so much of discussion. It's usually a monologue. So it was indeed a pleasure to be having a dialogue. And I'm indeed grateful to Dr. Popat, Dr. Kanagwell, Dr. Zamir Pasha, Dr. Ishwar Murthy, and of course, Jayashree, and everyone in IHS. And my humble apologies for this mix-up about the video. My, my apologies. Thank you, sir. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. thank you, but yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Zamir, sir, and thank you, Jayashree, sir, madam, for making this a very, very uh, lively, one of the best prime times we have ever heard. Now, let us listen to our uh, honorary secretary for uh, his views and uh, over to you, sir, Ishwar, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kanahevel. Thank you, Mr. President. I think we had everybody, the, all the viewers will agree, we had thanks to the IAG's prime time. Season 2 and Scene 3 today, actually, we had a double bonanza. And initially, I think Parveen Badia was so... ...newsletter, the first page I always eager to read. said yesterday is a history tomorrow is always a mystery today is the best present i think you not even you say you nailed it so well to in everybody's mind today Praveen, sir. thank you very much jai shri thanks once again to bring in professor arvind kumar and his superb lecture i admire his simplicity i think the pearls of wisdom in the field of thoracoscopic surgery all the residents should listen to him he said the importance of the teamwork adequate training the right temperament but tools do matter i understand i think you are perseverance with your team doing the subsevoid robotic thymectomy proceeding in the jms incidentally i want to introduce and tell all the viewers here it actually won the best JMAS original article for the year 2020-21. And we are going to award it in our coming conference. It is going to happen virtually. And I think Bilal and all your team are going to be there, at least virtually. I am sending the extending the invitation to you, Arvind Kumar. Congratulations to your team. So, as our president said, because of the, in spite of the COVID, we are doing our academic endeavors. The online FAGS is ongoing. We are keeping a hold on our on-site program and keep watching this site. We'll announce it at the end of May. And once you go to the website, which is updated every week, you will see the way how to join the online FAGS. And if you do that, then we'll be seeing the next year, February, in Rajamundri for your colorful convocation. As I said earlier, in this real world of COVID, we are right in this eye of the storm of the COVID pandemic. So we have to go and take the IHS 22, which is a very major international minimal access surgery conference to virtual world with a real academic happening. With thanks to our president and the galaxy of our members, and also all these international faculties and the national faculties agreed to come online to share the knowledge in five different halls in two days on May 
8th and 9th please pin your these dates and uh, interact because we are going to have not just uh, oration or exhibit or so or free papers we have enough time for live sessions four hours a day from 8 a.m to 12 noon so please watch these dates and also first time and I need all your blessings. We are going to have in the history of IAGS or history of many of the bigger associations to have a virtual convocation in a different style. We have put a lot of efforts to make it very enjoyable experience for 400 delegates. So Friday evening, that is 7th to May, 6 p.m., we are going to have the inaugural ceremony and convocation. Saturday and Sunday are going to be our conference. And Saturday, by convention in the evening, we are going to have for all IHS members will convene for the GVM and the valedictory and prize paper will be happening on Sunday. The award papers, all the JMAS articles will be given on Friday, the 7th to May, and I will be sending all the uh, links to all the winners. So, thanks so once again. I like to look forward to meet all of you in IHS 2021. And thank you, Doc Pluses, for a seamless transmission. I think it is one of the memorable day bringing all the galaxy of the speakers. Thanks to President. Thanks to Kanakivil. Thanks to Doc Pluses. Bye bye now. Jai Hind. Thank you, Ishwar Mukti. President, sir, you know everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, all the viewers on the Zoom and on the YouTube. Uh, Doplexes channels and Facebook channels. Uh, it is uh, a proud moment for all of us to have you on board. And on behalf of the IAGS, the president of the IAGS, and the entire galaxy of the faculty here, we thank you one and all for joining us this evening. I'm sure IAGS Prime Time is having a lot in its stock to offer in the coming programs. We look forward to have you on board for the future programs also. Thank you for joining us this evening. Good night, everyone. Well done, well done, good night. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Stay home, stay safe. Yeah, thank you.